<laughs> Hello, I'm Scott with Sump Coffee. We're in Nashville, Tennessee today, and we'll be discussing and exploring the mysterious ground control. Creating coffee or creating an experience, creating a hospitality experience, it's that act of curation and it's that act of sharing that thing that, that's very personal with, 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 a, with a large audience. You know, I've been um, a student forever. I probably like, by the time I graduated, I was uh, in the 26th grade, I think I say. So I went to graduate school, I went to law school. I lived in New York and I, I was a, a lawyer for a minute, you know, well, I didn't want to be a lawyer and I should have known that, but, you know, I tried photography, I tried to learn an instrument, I tried to, you know, work out, I, you know, I did all these things and until you find the, the, the right fit for you, it, it, it just doesn't sit well. So the focus at Sump is we want to roast and present the coffee in a way that highlights why that coffee was exciting to us and why we brought it in. It's kind of in a way, it's like presenting coffee like wine uh, without being pretentious. So we want what we do to be accessible. I don't want anybody to come in here and feel maybe that this isn't for them. Um, I think at any level of well, where you are in your coffee journey, uh, Sump should be for you and the people that we have on our team uh, be able to present the coffees we have with empathy and understanding that they were not always where they are today. So why we use ground control and what it is that it does for our coffee. I think the first thing to note is the baskets on the bottom. Bro, right? <laughs> no, I just feel like that's like, that, that's where we have to start the conversation. In a way, my first thought when I sort of heard about the, this idea of what the ground control is, my first thought was like, wait, you're brewing coffee with brewed coffee? But that's not what's happening here. And why you'd want to do that goes back to this rainbow analogy in espresso, is sometimes you would like to like pick it apart so that you could throw away pieces that maybe you're like, this cup, this cup would be perfect, but if I could just get rid of this, or if I could just round out this sharpness, or if I could minimize this note and try and maximize this note and disguise this note. And so that's really what's happening and that's where we're cutting it or sort of brewing it in different cycles. Paper filter, flat bottom, put your coffee in there. Water goes in there. It sits there for a moment. You have your coffee water slurry, a vacuum pump turns on, and instead of it dripping out and just draining out through gravity, it's sucked out through a vacuum. And then that tranche leaves the system and goes into the thermal pot. Then the next tranche begins. You can think of the first tranche as the kind of sweet and brightness of the cup. So kind of really primal, big palette notes. Second tranche is the character of the coffee. So when you begin to start articulating the notes of the coffee, or sometimes maybe let's call it the flavor of the coffee starts, that's where that where you shape that aspect of the cup. And the last bit is the part that sort of ties it together and adds body or mouthfeel. And so each one of these extractions, if you will, you're kind of setting up a, a different kind of chemical equilibrium and you're extracting a different uh, profile of that coffee and then when you thread it all back together that's your resultant cup. For our approach and our philosophy I think those components make a great cup of coffee and so a lot of what we're creating is an extension of what we as a team and myself obviously are, are uh, we find uh, rewarding in coffee.